Hello multi midchlorinated masters and thank you to Nikolai Miltonov for that malt mention introducing here in the Bothy somewhere in the Irish Sea Ralphie Review 912 and I'm doing a revisit review this is a re-review of a whisky that I in fact reviewed not that long ago but I've bought another bottle because I'm curious to see if it's changed much. Um, it's 18 year old Loch Lomond bottled at 46% unchill filtered although I do notice both on the bottle and on the box that there isn't really any reference to natural colour. In my opinion some Caramel E150A appears to be added judging by the colour of this whisky. It's got that sort of brown kind of orangey glow to it however part of the, the whisky has been partly matured in charred recharred casks um, and this can lead to an additional bit of colour which looks a bit caramelly so I'm not going to be too judgmental about it. Uh, before I get well I'll pour a wee dram first because it's 18 years old and as you know malt mates I recommend a minute in the glass for each year in the cask although to be honest I don't anticipate my review taking a full 18 minutes. Um, I reviewed this in February 2020 so pretty much two years ago in Ralphie review 812 so you might find it interesting to go back to that review after this review and just see to what extent my commentary has changed for what is essentially a very similar product. Um, something I want to, while the whiskey's opening up in the glass, something I want to bring your attention to in the back of the box are the two stills that they show. Uh, they show what is quite clearly a pot still but next to it they show what Loch Lomond describes as a unique still to the distillery but what the, what the rest of us call a Lomond still. Um, Lomond still, Loch Lomond distillery, you can see the connection. Uh, a number of distilleries have used Lomond stills over the years uh, and I want to make it clear that I'm fully aware that Loch Lomond don't really like that still being called a Lomond still uh, for their own particular marketing reasons. Loch Lomond is an interesting distillery. The, the, I bought it many many years ago after a bit of a hunt in a retail premises. It wasn't a shop it was an industrial premises that actually was retailing the whisky uh, down near Loch Lomond not that far from the distillery because I, I basically I phoned up the distillery looking to find somewhere I could actually find buy their whisky because of course if it's good enough for Captain Haddock in the Tintin stories well obviously it's going to get a little bit of curiosity from Ralphie and um, I found it eccentric I found it a little bit odd and when I went online in the early days back in the 2008-2009s um, I discovered there wasn't much to find about it apart from at the Malt Maniac site as it was then in which they didn't rate it at all uh, and it came across quite clear that the experts, <coughs> the informal experts found Loch Lomond to be a bland signature and an uneventful malt which wasn't particularly well matured uh, and when you looked at the distillery in those days back in the early days you got an idea as to why in fact when I was down um, passing by Loch Lomond I stopped off at the distillery and went up to the gate which was shut and a very communicative and lovely chap um, who was busy doing practical jobs said son there's no point in letting you in because there's nothing here that's that impressive so I really commended him for his honesty with me and it's always been a, a well it was a distillery that was very much closed to visitors and had a very industrial look about it from the outside. Loch Lomond is also quite prominent 
It's, it's renowned actually, that's the word, renowned for palletizing their whiskey in a warehouse. So where smaller traditional themed distilleries like Springbank, Brochlady, Isle of Arden, Benromach, all good examples, hey, Glenfarclas as well, have traditional dunnage warehouses and continue to build traditional dunnage warehouses, although they, they mix and match now, in fairness to them, because of the huge costs of establishing a dunnage warehouse these days and the practicalities of it. But still, there's distilleries out there who invest in dunnage. Loch Lomond Distillery does not. They invest in palletage. So instead of your cask being... Where's my, where's my little model cask? On its side, being stored. It's on its end, on pallets, for to a pallet. And I have to say, I am not a fan of this protocol, and I'll explain why in my Ralphie Review Extras. There's reasons. Meanwhile, let's get back to this single malt. Has it changed much in two years since I last reviewed it? And I have to, by the way, just for transparency, one reason I, bought, I buy it is because it's of its affordability in the UK. It is a very reasonably priced, in fact, all Loch Lomond whiskies are reasonably priced in this contemporary market here in 2022 um, for the age statements that they, they, they disclose. And I'm very pleased to see that they're bottling generally at a higher strength and that, you know, they're continuing to unchill filter their whiskies. Definitely a good move. Basically, they're making more of what they've got. What have they got in the signature? Bit of barley sugar, sweet and dry, slightly malty. Some generalised dry fruit, rather a restrained nose. And initially when you open this bottle, if you have the same experiences as I've had, you're going to find it really uptight, um, which is usually a sign of a heavy use of caramel colourant. However, I'm going to keep things open-minded here. Um, it could be partly caramel colourants put into it. Nothing in the patch packaging says natural colour. So if it doesn't say it, what makes us a reason? And that's the way I interpret it. First taste. Significantly better than when I first opened the bottle. This is one of these bottles. You take the cork off and you leave it lying overnight with the cork off to oxidise a little bit. Even better, decant it. Even better, once you've decanted it, shake the bottle and let it settle down again. Get the air into it. It needs it. It's quite astringent, bitter and slightly reminiscent of stale rice wine. Stale sake. It has a little bit of a green apple and pear thing going on in the background. It isn't, it's prominent but without being distinct. And the finish is rather fast. In the terms of form, the arrival's big, the initial development big, and then it kind of fades in a way that you would expect a much younger single malt to do. But when you add a drop of water, and it doesn't need much, that will certainly help. Final taste before I do that. A bit more intensity, sweet and sour on the arrival. More interesting, more developed. You can taste charred cask presence. There's a little bit of mild carbolic in there and sootiness. And that uh, classic cask char note how much am I going to add in water? You can add a little or add a lot. I'm actually going to add... Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to add that a full five millilitres. I'm adding two millilitres of water. If this was bottled at 40%, to be honest, it would be rather anemic, so I'm glad they're putting it out at 46%. And I'd just like to say in passing that I think the new owners over the last few years have, considering what they're starting with, significantly improving the profile and availability of Loch Lomond and I commend them for it. There you go. But, but, they've got a long way to go yet. 
I've added a drop of water. How's it looking? Just while it's settling down with the water, I mention, I'll mention that in over 11 years, it's coming on 12 years, seriously, 12 years, as a reviewer online, I've only reviewed Loch Lomond three times. The first time was the non-age statement, which was far superior to the blend. Um, although you, if you do find a bottle of High Commissioner blended scotch, I actually recommend you get it because honestly it gives White and Mackay a run for their money. It really does. It's a great mixing whiskey. Soda, Coke, ginger ale, perfect. And actually quite interesting as a sipper. Although it takes a bit of getting used to, you need to kind of recalibrate your senses back to blended mode. But it's an interesting, it's not a boring blend, that's for sure. But as a single malt, always more, more to my palate anyway. So in 2013, quite a while ago now, in Ralphie Review, Hunt, Ralphie Review 411, I reviewed the non-age statement, blue labelled Loch Lomond, and didn't give it a great mark. But it was an interesting whiskey and cheap as chips, very cheap for a single malt. Then in June 2018, so we're five years later before I come back to Loch Lomond, I reviewed it in Ralphie Review 730 and 730X. I was talking about Loch Lomond there. And that was the 12 year old. And again, competent but not overly impressed. Uh, and it's really the older Loch Lomonds that begin to sparkle a little bit. So when you see older bottlings, particularly single cask Loch Lomonds, that's the time to get interested malt mates. Um, they have actually, under the radar, brought out some really interesting um, older single malts, although they're few and far between. They've really not ramped up in that yet, but the time's plenty of time, and I think it's something they should do to help boost their reputation. But actually, the most interesting versions of Loch Lomond are to be found occasionally, and I do mean occasionally, in the independent bottlings. And in, I'll just mention it now, in Ralphie Review 913, I will be reviewing an independent bottling of, Lomond, of Loch Lomond under a very obscure name, which you've probably heard for, possibly heard, for the first time ever. So, that should whet your appetite for my next single malt whiskey review. In the meantime, I've added some water to this. It's settling down, a little strolly rollies, because we don't like the shaky shakies. On the nose, much more pleasant. Reminds me of a kind of fusion between Glenfiddich and Glen Murray. It's, it's in that, it's in that area. Um, although Loch Lomond is a, a lowland, highland, bordering on the lowland single malt. Much fuller arrival. Much more interesting. The form's extended. Hugely improved on first contact, which was frankly dismal. Now we're getting a sense of cask influence and age. These are jobbing casks, they're not exceptional casks. So I do think Loch Lomond need to have a little bit of a Billy Walker moment uh, and do that to some of their special limited and best of all single cask releases. Um, the time is now, Loch Lomond, the time is now. But big improvement in the palate after a fairly bland start, in fact, I'll, I'll say right now, this is actually an improvement from the last, from two years ago. There's just more happening in the palate. Apples and pears, butterscotch, soft toffee, a little bit of dry vanilla, something astringent, astringent in there, a little bit of sake going on. Um, we sake note, rice wine, distilled, once, <laughs> a little bit of gingeriness in the development, relatively simple malt, there's no big dramas going on here, that's just not, you get that in Talisca, you get, in our, that, get that in Ardbeg and you'll find that in Springbank, you don't find it in Loch Lomond yet, 
It'll be interesting to see where they go from here because as a forward looking distiller, distillery uh, who are employing some more uh, gregarious professional people to present their whiskey to the world, um, they're certainly busy doing a lot of work to improve the legacy, which wouldn't be difficult, frankly. Um, a much more interesting version of Loch Lomond. Um, I'm enjoying it more than I used to. See my careful choice of words here. What am I going to give it? I'm going to give this 84 out of 100 and that, mock mates, is my mock mark. I'm not sure if it's complete integrity but it's getting there. Certainly a step in the right direction and importantly and I want to emphasise this because it matters more now than it has previously. The price is accessible um, and the brand, Loch Lomond brand, is generally readily available uh, around the world. So look out for it. And for, for the die-hard whiskey fans, I think they're still looking down the nose at Loch Lomond because of its past. And I totally understand that. But I think that there are improvements happening at this distillery and they will, con they will continue to happen. And with any luck, I doubt it by the way, but with any luck, um, they will keep the, the brand-led consumer products uh, in palletage because it's very difficult to reverse that once you go down that road in their big tall warehouses. But in fact, we'll put a part of a warehouse aside for storing the casks on their side for the single cask versions because it makes a difference in my opinion it really really does um, and if it didn't make a dif difference distillers who were focused purely on quality wouldn't do it they wouldn't invest the money in it in traditional dunnage warehouses but they matter particularly at the price of whiskey these days i'm ralphie hope you've enjoyed this don't forget to click likey subscribey and uh, keep your moments multi. And join me again for Ralphie Review 912 Extras, in which I'll be talking warehouse and palletage. Bye.